Hello! Welcome to our video about lateral incisors movement with clear aligners. In the world of orthodontics, it's common to observe misalignment issues in the maxillary lateral incisors, which are often associated with various types of malocclusions. This primarily arises from their eruption sequence occurring after the central incisors, and whenever there is insufficient arch length, they will tend to erupt either rotated, malaligned, or out of the arch. Owing to their prominent anterior placement, these teeth tend to catch the eye of both patients and practitioners. Hence, they usually require meticulous and precise alignment for an aesthetically pleasing result. During aligners treatment, different movements are usually planned for such teeth to achieve the perfect alignment, including rotations, extrusion, and intrusion. However, maxillary lateral incisors have shown to be specifically difficult to move and often exhibit poor tracking with aligners treatment even with the most compliant patients and skilled practitioners. So what makes lateral incisors stubborn teeth? One major challenge is simply their smaller size in comparison to the adjacent teeth. Remember that aligners work by wrapping around the teeth and applying gradual push forces to move the teeth into position. So a decreased surface area is simply less force conveyed. Another point related to their mesiodistal width is the shorter arm of moment produced when trying to apply a push force on the most lateral extent of the crown in comparison to the central incisor as shown here. This will produce less moment, eventually making rotation more challenging. An additional aspect concerning the morphology of the lateral incisors pertains to their tapered crown and the absence of anatomical undercuts that could effectively engage pushing vectors of force. Consequently, this often leads to suboptimal tracking of the crowns during rotation within the aligner, resulting in an incomplete correction. The third contributing factor that commonly introduces complexity specifically to the rotation of the lateral incisors is the axial inclination of their roots. To understand this better, let's look at the central incisor first. Notice how the root and center of resistance are located directly above the crown. This is why any rotational forces applied to the crown will be translated directly to the center of resistance and cause its rotation. Unlike the lateral incisors where the root exhibits a distal tipping of a few degrees, causing the crown to not align directly beneath the root or center of resistance. When rotational forces are applied to the crown of the tooth, the net vector of forces will not pass by the center of resistance and no favorable responses to the rotational forces applied from below will be noticed. Despite the limitations mentioned, we will now reveal effective techniques using Eon aligners to overcome the resistance of this tooth and aid in its repositioning. Adding the right attachment can significantly improve the predictability of certain movements by directing the vectors of forces in the right way. For situations requiring rotations or extrusion along with rotations, the oblique attachment is the go-to choice. How does it work? The unique configuration of this attachment provides the aligner with enough active surface to achieve these movements in a more predictable manner. This configuration has a lot of surface area that is as perpendicular as possible, interacting with the aligner and pushing vectors of force. In addition, the beveled nature allows for tolerance if there is slippage between the aligner and the attachment and will continue to push the tooth in the desired direction. Notably, the versatility of these attachments isn't limited to singular movements. Depending on the attachment's placement, it can facilitate mesial in or distal in rotations, showcasing its adaptability to various clinical scenarios. 
We can also use the gingivally beveled extrusive attachment when the major planned movement is extrusion with no rotation or root uprighting is planned. And finally, when pure mesiodistal bodily movement is planned, especially in cases of midline correction, the vertical beveled rectangular attachment is to be used. Its active surface will direct forces to help in the mesiodistal movement with an opposing force to counteract unwanted tipping. Despite all the enhanced techniques and different attachment configuration, some lack of tracking especially for rotation and extrusion of laterals can be expected. To overcome this, several tips and tricks can be followed. First, make sure that your patient is compliant with aligners wear, encourage the use of chewies to improve aligners fitting, and extend the wear cycle to accommodate for challenging movements. Second, Ensure there is enough space or clearance around the tooth for its movement, as lack of enough space could be a major cause of poor tracking and resistance to movements. Third option is the use of auxiliaries specially for poor tracking extrusion movements as shown here. You can simply add cutouts on the gingival third of the labial and palatal sides of the lateral incisor and bond buttons to hook bootstrap elastics from the palatal to the labial side to facilitate extrusion. And finally, requesting adjustment for finalizing the alignment of less tracking teeth can always be the way to proceed, especially when multiple other movements will still need to be addressed in a refinement plan. One helpful tip, however, is to plan some overcorrection steps during refinements for the less tracking movements. Overcorrection steps are simply meant to move the teeth slightly beyond their target position to accommodate the lag in tracking. Incorporating these strategies with Eon aligners can greatly enhance the success of lateral incisor tooth movement, providing the optimal alignment and a confident smile. Thank you for watching.